Hey everyone, it's Joan Irfan here from The Automator, and uh, like last week I recorded a video challenging people to list their top five scripts that they had been either created themselves entirely or at least adapted and tweaked and stuff, and so um, I'm bugging Irfan here to, to give us a list of his top five. Um, Irfan, why don't, you, so why don't you start working through your list here? So uh, first of all, uh, I have uh, my one, this discovery tool, and uh, the second is active monitor scaling and the third is Clipster and uh, and fourth is Abirium. People don't know it, but it is like automating any application using WebDriver. And there is a Rufadium, uh, like it, it's, uh, it's, it's automates uh, web, web pages with WebDriver. So. so this is our discovery tool. And uh, what I like about it is this crosshairs and uh, these are two GUIs. And when I drop it on anything, I will tell us that what kind of co controls or like we can use Win32 ACC UIA messages. And if I drop it on uh, it, uh, like Chrome, it will say we can use Refidium to UIA ACC and messages and uh, if we use uh, a notepad in admin mode, it also tells us that you will require admin mode and uh, it supports Win32 menus and Win32 control ACC UIN messages. Uh, the next script. Hold on, real, real quickly, this is one, if you guys aren't familiar with it, um, we, we have a download for it, but it's phenomenal. If you don't understand the approach you should take, you can take, I should say, um, for, for automating a program, this one gives you kind of a guide, at least some of the top ways you can approach. No, you can't automate them. So, sorry. The other, the, this script is uh, active monitor scaling. So right now I am on DPI 1 to 5. So for changing DPI, I have to go to the display setting, but but I can choose monitor and then change it. But with this tool, I have set like on active display scaling means the arrow where is the arrow is that will be the active monitor. And when I hit this alt key, so I can switch to that DPI setting. So. And uh, this is monitor scaling 175, I, th I think one, 150, I suppose. This is 125. And uh, this is 100, I think. So this is very simple tool. Uh, it will change the DPIs and it will take Oh, it's a good time to affect sometimes, but it will change the DPI right away. We, we might, the, I'm just thinking about it. If we might use our notification class to at least put up a little display saying the DPI has been changed to, right? To let people know that, that might be a handy thing to add to it. But this one, I remember when you and Isaiah, we were all working on it, it was really hard to get that active monitor, right? Because, um, the na the things that are numbers in auto hockey that they use aren't what the numbers yeah. are. And you guys dug around a lot to figure that out. Yeah, Isaiah and me researched it and together we have uh, some ideas and we tried one and uh, one and after another one and then we just found the solution within <laughs> within like ten to twenty minutes and and we just implemented it. So there is uh, another script called Clipster. Uh, let me show you um, examples, and I will run it. This, these are the examples, and uh, I have to normal. I have to switch to normal, not bad. So this script is running, and what it does, we always use the hardest strings, but with uh, with this script, we are using the clipboard, and uh, with clipboard, it will take like it if we are pasting a long hard string, it will take time. Like 
if I do T, uh, I have that I don't have running toolkit or I'm sure, but now just red. So you can see I paste it and then I just find out to this. So if I'm using HTML, this tool will be very handy. So if I can do h dot div, so I am back into the pointer. Now I can say something like id is equals to something. So that will be simple to work with. And uh, if I paste, uh, if I want to use some locations like if I do run r dot location l for location dot hp and just it will send the enter to it and I will get to that location. So this is a very handy and simple script. So I'm using Clipster and I can also copy the bitmap. So if I open paint and uh, if I do p dot r u, just I'm just showing to showing to like now it's in my clipboard. And if I paste, uh, if I paste um, p dot r u, yes. If I do p dot r u, it will directly paste the image. Uh, and my my clipboard is not gonna have something. So if I pay something like, if I, if I want to pay something, uh, clipboard is, clipboard is empty. Like if I have to copy some text, if I copy this and then do the P picture dot those, ah, uh, sorry. I have to select p dot those then I have this image there but my clipboard has always been restored so this is a very handy tool and time saving and we can save our time and I can just use a big text like that so if I press f11 forget so if I do F10, you see I I am pasting a hyperlink. The it I built the hyperlink using HTML, and right, right now I am pasting HTML as a rich text. So if I do F2 there, uh, F2 what is the code? F2 yeah. So yeah. This by the way, I I asked him to start on this thing because. I have a billion hot strings, and unfortunately with Windows, when you're starting to use them in a lot of tools now, the hot strings get conflicted when they're sending them. And so I said, all right, Irfan, all right, let's let's make a function to paste it and restore it. And then I'm like, you know, hey, we should be able to easily make it where we could paste in a picture, because I have that from something else. And then we're, we were talking a bit more of like, well, couldn't we use the WinClip library to shove it into hyperlinked text, rich text? Um, from HTML. And so now, because of course with hot strings, you can't do rich text and stuff, right? You just do plain text, but now we have that functionality. So uh, yeah, this one, it's a lifesaver when it comes to, you have a lot of stuff, it's really handy. Okay, and what were your other tools? So this other tool is uh, called uh, Ethereum, and uh, you can find it on my GitHub. Well, we can create a download for it as well, right? Just to yeah. make it convenient, or at least we'll put a pretty link to, to drive people to have the URL really easily. Yes. So this is the tool, and that also used a web driver, but there is a settings for this. We have to install the web driver from, uh, from Microsoft, and then in the developer mode, we have to enable this. And, uh, this is the test. Actually, the, using the barium, it if I run this and in V two, and it's it's telling me that 
what is the build of the driver and what is the windows and the version os version and uh, and then it will create a session of a notepad and tells me how many control on it the right next message will be so these are the elements of this application like we have created the session of this application and these are all the controls and we can we can use those controls like the access and like this edit control now i am accessing and then it will send text to it so testing app driver using a virium and uh, testing yeah add new line and these are the menus i can also like i'm using query selector if uh, let me just show you guys the code in this file yeah i am doing the get element select by control type and the menus and i am getting element by class names there are other methods to to, uh, to approach a met, uh, how element. did you so how but how do you discover the those paths and, and what you can access actually i was working with the ophelium web driver and it has a standard uh, like apis and uh, it's it is using web uh web driver like chrome driver firefox pico driver these are all using a standard api call so i was like developing the and i was like it was in my mind so what's about looking for windows app driver and it happened to be a thing and i researched it and it is using that standard api but a little bit different and i re read the github page over the so tool. it looks like you created a tool to discover that dives into the program and will tell you what's available is that right yeah okay. and and we can also export the xml of that program so in the end let me show you uh, when when this one finishes like i right now after that message box i will click the end item two, the file and then uh, then it will like trying to post something like escape or something so so i access this like i have access this and if i cancel this thing okay so it is looking for something from it's not reachable okay so i have just let me just rerun it and do not stop. So I'm getting elements. I can access the elements. I can uh, get the menus. I can click the menus. And uh, uh, so what is I'm doing there? So after I, I re access this, okay, so. I'm looking for the notepad, but I I happen to have another notepad that is in admin mode, mm. and that is not letting me have control on it. So let me run this again. I created the session. I look for every control. When I get it in message box, then I am sending text to one control and then I am getting all the menus and I am click on one. And after that, okay, so if I do save and then I have this XML file of this, like this is about the source XML of that notepad, it's, it is telling me all the details, the automation IDs. So it's kind of the DOM, the, so to speak? The frame ID. Yeah, for, DOM for the application. Yeah. It's kind of DOM for the application. So you can see how many, how much detail they put in it. And uh, there is some kind of class name we cannot approach with normal, 
viewer. So I will create some kind of viewer later. Okay. Actually, I have to learn more about it. So, and uh, it's like, it's not easy, uh, but. All right, let's get into the last one. Yeah. Let's yeah, the last one is also my favorite one. Uh, Rufidium. So, if I so this is the Rufidium, and I have an example like I I will show you three examples like this will create session and uh, terminate it. So if I show you this example, in this example, we are running the driver, we are creating new session, we are navigating to URL and we are doing a message box with ownership and uh, we are closing and then exiting the Chrome. So if I run this script, it will create, a, if there is no web driver available, it will download for you and then create a session for you. So you can see this message box. I cannot access the web page until I deal with this. So I'm using the HWND. So if I click this button, it will close the session and exit the driver. So this is a simple script. And uh, the other one is performing uh, actions, the drawing something. So I was working on the class that is like action HK for Rufidium and uh, I happen to build some really easy ways to perform actions on a web page. So this is an example like I'm just building a action object and then I will pass this action object on the page. So let me just demonstrate it with you. So this is the web page and I'm navigating it. So this is the doodle. So le let me just click this thing and click this thing. Now I'm ready to doodle. And if I press OK, it will draw a hexagon for me. So let's see. Yeah, this draws a hexagon. Uh, maybe it's a, maybe I'm wrong. It's a pen pentagon, I think. So if I press OK and it will close the uh, script. So this is a simple example of performing an action like like clicking and moving the mouse and releasing the mouse and then again it's like a drag and drop and you can see a drawing. And the other part is capturing a full size screenshot. So let me just modify a location. So we can see a script dir, a script dir, and then freedom png, uh, and all also there. So it will create a png file, but full size screenshot. So there's a trick to capture that full size screenshot, and we have to call some dev tool protocols calls to have extend the, the capturing size from the web page. So this will navigate to the page and then wait for it to finish loading and then capture the screenshot. So, so if I press OK, it will exit. And if I go to the folder, like review folder, file explorer. So this is my PNG. If I run this, and uh, you can see how long this web page is and I zoom it I can have every word and this is called you can easily get a full size screenshot of that. Cool. So this is for Fedium and uh, <laughs> and uh, by the way uh, my daughter name is Feza Fatma and uh, my little one is, is, uh, is her name is Abira Noor <laughs> so I Name those web driver libraries after after <laughs> after them. So that's yeah. So to summarize, Rafadium, just so people do they totally get it is with AutoHotkey, you can do web scraping 
when in we came up with nine different ways that you can web scrape. This one I think is the most robust when you need something that's doing a lot more than just adding a simple thing to a page or something. Rafidium is a great tool to use for you have a very a more complicated goal um, and you need something that's going to be. He also has it where you can have profiles set up and stuff, so it logs in and does stuff. It's it's very robust. It, it's all using classes and objects, so you got to be familiar with those. It's not something if you're not used to web scraping or um, using classes and objects. It's not for you for that. But if you do understand them, it's a great solution for you. All right. So thanks, thanks for fan. Um, yeah, very cool stuff. Um, we'll we'll do some deeper dives into, especially your last two of doing some training videos on how to use those things once we get going with them. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you guys have your top five list, I'd love to hear them. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.